All right, hello Cyclocross fans and welcome to a very special edition of Crosstalk. I am joined by maybe the greatest cyclocross racer of all time, Sven Ness. Welcome. Thanks. I want to ask him a few personal questions, but also stuff that you guys might be interested in as well. As a coach myself, um, I'm really curious to hear the differences maybe in, in training science and how you prepare uh, maybe differently than some of the U.S. riders. So tell me a bit about your, your Monday through Friday, um, both before the season and during the season. What's your training like? It depends uh, the period of the, of the year. Yeah. Uh, you need to start um, after the season uh, to train your whole body, um, um, core, uh, mm -hmm. you need to train core, you need to train a lot, a lot of distance and that's what we do, what I do um, in the beginning of, of April until the end of May. Are you in the gym? Um, not so many in the gym, gym. I do, I do some, some, some core uh, without weight mm -hmm. um, to train my back and my my uh, my my what is the name my your abdomen my, yeah. yeah so that's what I do um, I don't run in the summer uh, I only train a lot of distance and then it it, it goes further and further more in intensive mm -hmm. um, train a lot in Spain in Mallorca in the mountains so that I need to have a lot of power on the bike to, to, to climb all the mountains. Yeah. Uh, and in the end of uh, May, I, I start my competition. Sometimes in mountain bike, sometimes on the road. Um, the mountain bike is good for um, on a train on a high heart rate, um, low speed, but the climbing, technical skills. And the road races is for uh, the distance mm -hmm. um, and, and, and uh, on a train on a high, on a high speed. So that's what I do in summer. When people when people talk about the summer and they talk about uh, like a base season or something, how much volume will you do? What's a what's a big week for you in terms of maybe hours? Uh, Thirty hours. And then how would you, is that? You do one week like that, or would you would you stack a few together? Most of the times, it's it's um, in summer between twenty five and thirty hours for three weeks, and then and then uh, one week recuperation. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's a normal way. Uh, depends also if you have races or not. Or yeah. but uh, a, a long distance week is is around 30 30 hours. And that's obviously so different than what you do as the the fall approaches. And yeah, in definitely. Fall. Then it's more technical skills. Mm -hmm. I I run a bit more, um, but it's more yeah um, short sprints. Um, in the woods, uh, train uh, two times uh, in a week in the woods. Then I have also five, sometimes five hours in a day, mm -hmm. but I train three hours distance in the morning, um, have a lunch, uh, sleep half yeah. an hour, an hour, and go back to the woods and train one hour and a half, two hours in the woods over there. So With more intensity. More intensity. So yeah, that's, that's completely different. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's also, how many races you do in a weekend. Yeah. If you do two races, Saturday and Sunday, it's hard to train a lot. So yeah. when you have um, trained in summer a lot of distance, it's really good to keep your condition a whole season. When you don't train enough distance, mm -hmm. you're gonna be strong maybe in the beginning of the season, but your condition is going directly down when you are racing a lot on a high heart rate. Mm -hmm. So how better your shape is, how better your um, your your engine, your yeah. how bigger it is, yeah. how longer you can keep your shape until the end of the season. And that's my strength, that I train a lot distance, that I can keep my strength until the end of the season. Even, I mean, the season's so long though, from you know September to all the way you race over in Europe, uh, almost to March. Um, even with a big summer, there, there still has to be places during the season where you have to maybe be willing to sacrifice performances at certain races to do some training. How often, uh, how many races every year do you feel like you're, you know, I don't know, I don't want to use the word peaked, but uh, do you feel like you're really prepared for and how many are you training through with another race in mind? In the beginning of my career, even w until three, four years ago, I never peaked. I tried to be the strongest from the first until the last day. That's the reason why I won so many races. Yeah. But it's also the reason why I not have the record as a world champion. Because I was maybe five, six percent less strong at the end of the season than in the beginning. And a few riders mentally only 
think about the world championships yeah. you know and then that can make the difference if the if it is a hard race if it is muddy and 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 to be the really the strongest it's possible to win but it's fast and it's really explosive and you are raced 100% a whole season it can make the difference and a lot of world championships were really fast yeah and that's one of the reasons why I not won so many world cha world t world titles but the last years what you see is that I choose a bit more yeah I'm older I need to choose and I try to win as much as possible but on a certain way in the season I say okay now I'm gonna quit one weekend and I'm gonna say no races I go into Mallorca train a bit a bit recovery and that's what I done last year and you see that I have a really strong um, middle of the season mm -hmm. and uh, I was really in shape at the world championships and the national championships so it changes a bit but when I was young I wanted to win always and you pretty much did <laughs> I did yeah there was a year I won everything yeah. all the, the GC's the national title world title yeah so yeah it's it's that's what I am uh, I want to race always on the highest level looking at your you know physiologically if you had been a road racer full-time what sort of road racer would you compare yourself to what would your style Spring have classics, been uh, in, in uh, Paris-Roubaix mm -hmm. that type of races um, I'm not a racer that is very good on long climbs because mm -hmm. my weight um, I think I have the engine on to do to do uh, uh, good results on the road but explosive climbs shorter mm. and the temperature must not be too high because that's my weak point uh, above a certain um, uh, temperature mm -hmm. I have problems right so it's dangerous here in Vegas to race for me yeah are you some people are secretive about their their numbers I'm sure you train with a power meter could you share any uh, you know what, what, what's what's a threshold number for you like in a race uh, average power or what's like a maximum five second power for someone like yourself uh, well when I train distance I'm, I'm that guy that is training three four hours on a uh, average power uh, not adapted so with mm -hmm. zero zero in it yep. uh, between 270 and 300 and so you and how much do you weigh uh, 72 kilos okay wow so I train my distance on a high speed uh, yeah. I, I have a high basic uh, speed and, and yeah that's that's what I yeah that's what I, what what is good at my body I think that I can train long on, on really high speed uh, my maximum power is not so high what's I the highest number you've ever seen uh, 1400 it's not so high mm -hmm. but when you are in cyclocross and you are on the limit it's not the maximum power you need to have how many times you can yeah, do it that's that's what you need to have so um, how harder the race how better I am at the end um, but yeah what you need what do what you want to know uh, I'm, I'm, I'm those are pretty that's people are gonna enjoy hearing those numbers it makes us all feel like m mortals <laughs> <laughs> uh, last question and even oh, what I what I surprised of now I'm 38 mm -hmm. and my heart rate yesterday in Vegas it's also because of the heat and it's the beginning of the season yeah, but I fresh. had a maximum heart rate of 195 and I s it surprised me because it's two years ago mm -hmm. 198 uh, 191 192 that was my limit and now I was three uh, uh, heart rates more wow so even when I'm 38 it's it's still uh, I feel myself really really strong and it's it's all in the mind when you are motivated age doesn't count you need to you have a bit of luck that you are not ill or uh, no injuries but when you are trained hard and you are mentally uh, a guy that is 22 mm -hmm. everything is possible do you race with a power meter not so many because there are a lot of zero points in cyclocross mm -hmm. uh, and because of the weight so uh, I want to uh, to have yeah. a bike that is really uh, uh, less weight 
um, but yeah then I do I do some sometimes uh, when I do a 10 minute block in Mallorca on a climb I can do it for uh, 460 470 watts 10 tell minutes me, tell me this is a question I always love to talk to different coaches or different athletes about because so many people have different philosophies about training if you had to pinpoint uh, one single workout or one single day that you feel like um, is sort of the cornerstone maybe or gives you the most benefit towards racing cyclocross what does that workout look like or what does that day look like what sort of intervals how many how long what what do you think translates best um, well I have a, a, a training course where I train a lot mm -hmm. with my coach he's standing there and yelling to me and, and uh, we want to beat the records of the laps I do mm -hmm. and um, when we train over there and I can beat my records and I can um, stay on my heart uh, my, my heartbeat is yeah. going like I want with the feeling that I want um, then I have a day that I say okay now I'm ready to win big big races so it's all about uh, doing it a lot so it's like a race simulation almost yeah, by race yourself simulation. Uh, and, and doing it a lot N not one hour on the same on the same uh, uh, speed but mm -hmm. doing some special skills uh, explosive climbs uh, some running um, and choose uh, a lab where you where you say okay now I'm going uh, completely uh, mm -hmm. to the limit. Probably harder than you even go in, in yeah, the race. Yeah, and 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 then see which time it is, and I say okay now it's that that time, and see that development is coming, and every week you're getting better and better, and and on a certain way, and that's interesting for a coach. Say to your athlete um, now. You need to be care that you're not going over the limit mm -hmm. because there is a breaking point yeah. and when you know and you know your athlete really good then you can keep it on a, on a high level or even come a little bit more back and, and have a bit of recuperation otherwise it's dangerous to getting ill yeah. uh, to have a bad month yeah. and and that's the strength of talking with your coach and talking with, with the athlete that you need to know um, at what time you're going a bit more slow and, and that sometimes on a point that you're feeling that you're really strong and you can do everything you want, that's a dangerous part because then you're going too far. Awesome stuff. Well, if you guys are looking for a coach, clearly he's <laughs> way better than I am, but look me up. Uh, thank you so much, Sven, for joining us, and good luck with the rest of your season. Okay, thank you.